Hey everyone, welcome back. Like I always say, I hate long intros, so let's jump straight into the content of this video, which is coloring your Blackmagic footage. This applies to all Blackmagic raw footage. So if you're shooting on Blackmagic Pocket Cinema Camera 4K, 6K, the 6K Pro, even the Ursas, and I believe the Micro Cinema Camera. All Blackmagic raw, this applies because a lot of the B-Raw settings are the same. So let's jump straight into it. This will be a very comprehensive video. So uh, from anywhere from beginners to intermediate, uh, and this is basically just my preferences for coloring and how I and how I like to color my nature footage, my outdoor footage. You guys know that I'm an outdoors person and most of the footage I shoot is outdoors. So this is how I like to, to color grade now there are a few products that I use that are not free. They you you need to buy them, and we'll get we'll get into that later. Um, but this is my process, so at least you'll see it. Now, if you are new, we're going to start from the very beginning with with uh, how to even be able to edit your B raw footage. If you've already got a Blackmagic camera and have been shooting raw and just want to see my color settings, I'll put that timestamp up here for you, so you can jump straight to that and skip over the boring stuff of downloading all your software, etc. So let's jump in. First, we need to download the B-Raw plugin for Premiere Pro. So all we have to do is go to Blackmagic's website. We'll go to support. We'll click on the cameras. We'll scroll down and we'll find the latest Blackmagic Raw download here, right, right here we're seeing Blackmagic Raw 2.1. I should probably update mine. So we'll download that, we'll install it. You'll need to close Premiere first before you install this. And then of course, once it's installed, relaunch Premiere and we'll start to load our footage. Okay, so we've downloaded that. Let's open up Premiere now. I'm gonna create a new project. Okay, so you've installed your Blackmagic Raw plugin for Premiere Pro. Next thing is loading our Blackmagic footage. You won't be able to tell that you've installed it until you load some Blackmagic footage into Premiere. So let's go ahead and load some of our footage and just take a look at the settings. We could load our clips straight from here. We could load our Blackmagic RAW settings straight from this menu, straight from our project bin. But I like to create a, a new sequence first. Let's put this in a bin, keep it a little more organized and then we'll create a new sequence. I'm gonna make a 4K sequence. And the reason I'm making, the reason I do 4K sequences instead of 6K is 6K requires a lot more processing power and uh, this, this guy doesn't do so well with 6K. Also, it'll help to show you how to crop if you're new to using uh, 6K footage. We're just gonna scrub our clips real quick and throw some stuff in. Our next step is to load our B-RAW settings. So we'll double click on our clip up here in the effects controls tab at the top. You're gonna see the default window that opens up your opacity, your motion, uh, any effects you apply will show up here in this window. However, you can apply them to the master. Now, if you go over to the source or the master, this is where you'll find your Blackmagic RAW settings. And you'll notice by default, it is set to camera metadata. So whatever you shot your Blackmagic footage in, whether it be film, video, or extended video, it will by default load that setting into your sequence. So now what we have to do is change that to clip. So now it's on a clip by clip basis. You change it manually as you like. That's how I like to do it so that I can adjust the dynamic range that I like. Um, now you go to, you go down the menu here and you'll see all your settings and you can you can change your white balance automatically um, i keep that as shot and i like to adjust my white balance manually if you've noticed my videos i like to lean more towards the warm side of of coloring i really love just warmth here's what i do when i'm color correcting my black magic raw footage and bringing up the gamma le levels etc i will start with my contrast and um, I start with my contrast because from there I know where I, where I want to go with the rest of the look. And you're going to see I'll bump my saturation up typically to 1.4 or 1.5 and contrast anywhere between 1.3 and 1.4 because I think that 
that gives it a nice cinematic feel on export. Now below your contrast, you're going to see a midpoint. Now this, I would describe this as your exposure. Um, this you would adjust up and down and it, yeah, it pretty much just acts like your exposure. So for this scene, I'm pretty happy with this scene. I like how it looks. Uh, yeah, I'm really okay with how this looks. So moving on to our next clip of me pouring some hot water into a pour over out by the stream, you're going to notice on the left hand viewer that you have a wide shot on your right hand is a close up shot. And this is where the 6K to 4K comes in. I mean, most of you can probably figure this out. It's just cropped because it's a 4K sequence. All we need to do is adjust the size under our effects controls. And for a 4K sequence, 63% works for the 6K footage perfectly. So now we've got our wide shot and I really like wide shots. Sometimes you like to use the 100% the crop, the uh, one third crop, whatever it is, extra crop, uh, because why not? That's why you have 6K footage. Most people aren't watching in 6K. Um, so I like to keep the 6K. I like that crop every once in a while. Basically, we're going to do the same thing to this clip, but for similar settings, um, for similar shooting settings, so these two were minutes apart. Light was almost identical. There's a nice shortcut I can do with these two clips. And you can do this with any clip, but specifically for clips that have been shot in the same time frame on the same shoot, same lighting, what you want to do is go back to your source, your master, uh, click on the Blackmagic RAW tab here, Apple C. So you just want to copy it. And then we do the same thing. Go to the effects controls, source tab, click on that one and hit Apple V. So just copying and pasting those settings instantly copies your color correction for that clip. So I'm happy with how this looks. We're going to keep moving on. This one, I definitely want to zoom out. Okay. Another shortcut. Let's say I do want to, I want to zoom out. I don't want the crop on all of these. An easy shortcut around that is click on the clip itself in your sequence, hit Apple C, select all the other clips that you want to apply this setting to right click on that on all the, the clips selected a, as a whole hit paste attributes you're going to want to click on motion most of the time opacity it won't affect it if you haven't changed your opacity but if you have it will affect it so just click on the settings that you want in this case that's fine so i'm going to apply it it is now applied that 63 percent scale to all of the following clips now it has not applied any of the color corrections that we've done. So we still need to go in and do the color corrections. This is the amazing thing about raw is that you have non-destructive editing of your clips. So I shot this clip in 400 ISO and I can bump it down to 320 down to the whole way down to 100 and not have any issues. I mean, that still looks fine. You got all your shadows, all your highlights are still there. They're not, that's not a great exposure, but that's solid. And that's the amazing thing about raw. Now, of course, big files, but raw is worth it. Okay. Keep moving. So now we have a dark scene and typically when you apply a lot of contrast to a dark scene, it's going to just completely destroy your, your blacks and your, and your highlights. I'm going to still go with about 1.2 contrast. You'll see that I lost a lot in the, in the shadows and I'm still going to do 1.5 saturation. White balance is okay, but I'm going to bump up my midpoint to about 0.43 and maybe even my ISO. Okay. So I'm okay with that. That looks solid. I think that'll turn out well. Let's keep going. Another decently lit shot. Uh, not a lot of contrast or sorry, not a lot of, uh, not a lot of hard light coming in. So this is a nice diffused light, a little bit of a array here. This one, I guess I did shoot with extended video, but I still want to change some settings. So I'm happy with how this looks. Yeah. Now this one, um, you'll see a lot of shadows in this one. This one has beautiful light. I love this shot but it may be a little difficult to work with. 
Now here is a very diffused lighting situation. Now this one, I want to keep it kind of cold. I like the feeling of it was cloudy, overcast day, gonna start raining kind of cold as I'm wearing my down jacket, of course. I'm, I like how this looks already, so I'm gonna keep that there. Here's another, um, this one's a very difficult shot because if you look at it, it's pretty much set. It, it could use a little bit more saturation and, and a little bit of contrast um, as you see some of the, the film fade. Um, so let's bump it to 1.2 instead. Bump our midpoint to 0.45, go, go pretty far with that. 1.5 on saturation and maybe even bump up our white bounce a little bit. Make those uh, sunset colors pop slightly. And our final clip out here in the desert, sunny afternoon. Okay, so now we've color corrected all of our Blackmagic RAW footage. The next step is to color grade it. Like I mentioned before, a few of the products I use are paid products. One of them being Film Convert. If you have never heard of Film Convert, I highly, highly encourage you to go check out filmconvert.com. Just take a look at their footage, take a look at their credentials. Um, just a fantastic plugin for any of your NLEs. I will be doing a video in partnership with Film Convert coming in the, in the next few weeks, so stay tuned for that. Really excited to work with them. But filmconvert.com, amazing software. Next, I use a LUT. Surprise, surprise, I use a LUT from Lens Distortions. It's called the Century LUT. Now the downside about lens distortions, they make amazing products. I really love the stuff that they have, the stuff that I've bought. Unfortunately, they now only offer an annual subscription, so you cannot buy an individual LUT or, or an individual creative element from them like you used to be able to, um, which is a very unfortunate thing because the annual membership is pretty pricey but uh, great, great quality stuff. So those are the two pieces that I use color grading my footage. So let's jump into that. Now, I'm gonna create something that is called an adjustment layer. Now, you treat an adjustment layer just as if it was footage, if it were a clip. And when I go to create it, it'll automatically adjust the resolution to whatever sequence you have open. So I have 3840 by 2160. It's just gonna make an adjustment layer perfectly sized for that ratio. Go ahead and create it. Now it drops it in here like it's a clip. I'm gonna call this 4K because you can create an adjustment layer for every different sequence. So if you're creating an Instagram story, create a, uh, a 1080 by 920 adjustment layer and then label it whatever you want. But make sure you know which one's which, otherwise you're gonna be scrolling to find the dimensions, yada, yada. Okay, so now, like I said, treat your adjustment layer like it's clipped. I'm gonna drag it on top of my footage. Now I usually put it not right above the footage, but one above, so in case I wanna throw any text in there that I want to, to be applied with the, the final grading, the text will look like it's in the video. So I throw my adjustment layer in here. My next step is to go into the coloring tab. You can just apply Lumetri as though it were an effect where you drag and drop it. I just like to go to the coloring tab, it's quick and easy. And all your settings come over here on the right. Now I don't touch any of the basic adjustments because we just color corrected all of our footage, we don't need to. I will however bump up my saturation to 120. Why do I do that when I've already bumped up my saturation? Because when Premiere exports, they cut saturation and contrast. I hate that they do that. I have no clue, it literally boils my blood thinking about it. And I'm sure so many of you guys have the simil a similar reaction. It just drives you nuts that they do this on export. You should be exporting exactly what you're seeing in, in your program out export window. So that drives me nuts. Unfortunately, this is what you have to do to get it close. So I boost it to about 120. I, I think probably 122 is, is the, the prime to get it back to what you want to see. You're gonna see these clips look a little oversaturated on screen. Actually, you might not because of the export when I export this video. So the next step that I take is I go down here to the creative tab under my color window and I go to the creative look and where it says none, you click on that and there'll be a drop down menu which is where all of your default Premiere LUTs will load as well any that you've purchased and loaded yourself will appear here. 
So I'm going down here to LD Century 1. Now you're gonna notice that instantly made it very green in the lows. I, I love greens. I'm an outdoors person. Green is my favorite color, but this is a lot of green everywhere. So what I do with this is I bring this down to about 60 or 70, let's just say 65%. So that takes some of the dramatic greens out of the lows and it gives this, this really nice look. And what I like about the lens distortions LUTs is that they're very uniform across all footage. It will look pretty awesome. And I, I literally use this for every single video and I do this exact process. So now I've made all my coloring adjustments on the adjustment layer. My next step is the film convert layer. So I'll go to my effects window. Here we go. And I made a favorite folder with my favorites. And uh, here's film convert. So now I'll click on my adjustment layer in the effects controls tab. You're going to notice it put Lumetri for the color and then film convert right under it. So now I'm going to pick my film stock and this is where you have a lot of options with film convert. They have really nailed it. They just killed it with their film stock emulations. You're going to like pretty much all of them. I, I can't say enough about film convert and I can't say enough about how excited I am to work with them. But my choice, um, film stock is Kodak Portra. And now you're going to see it, it brought down, it brought down some of the exposure and added more greens to my, my lows, my shadows. But I do a very similar thing where you have an option to blend your film color. And I usually do this one about 50 or 60%. Let's go 55. There we go. So now this is just a nice blend of your LUT, your film convert, and your color correction from your Blackmagic raw footage. And I think this looks beautiful. Of course, use your, you know, if you have a personal preference for color, if you like reds in your lows or blues in your lows, whatever. There's options for that, of course, as well. I'm just showing you my, my process. It's very easy, very simple. Um, but I'm really happy with the products that I've used and I'm grateful that there are products out there that are phenomenal quality products and I find no need to make my own for you guys to buy. I just would recommend their stuff because it's phenomenal and it gives great results. So just looking through this footage, it looks beautiful. My last step now that I've looked at it all with both layers on my adjustment layer, both Lumetri and Film Convert, the last step is to go back through the footage and make sure I'm still happy with all of the settings. Is it exposed right? Is it the right white balance? Um, all of that. So we're going to do that really quickly with all of my clips. I think this one could be slightly brighter. And because Film Convert is a very CPU heavy app, it'll probably lag a, a few, maybe a second before the settings kick in. So that's a real quick look at how I color my footage. Please like, comment, and subscribe if you guys liked this video. As well, check out those products I mentioned. They're really phenomenal, both Film Convert and Lens Distortions. Also, all the products that I use on my trips, filming, camping, are all in the description below. Please take a look at those. And thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.